Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter. And the title of today's video is Charles Mulley. Today, I want to talk to you about a man named Charles Mulley. Now, when I get to the uh, portion of this video where I'm going to share a couple of scriptures, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible, as I always do, okay? So when we get there, I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to look at those scriptures with me. Now, Charles Mulley is a man who God used to do something that is so amazing to me that I put his testimony right there in the scriptures along Joseph, what God did with Joseph. His testimony has so inspired me, it has literally changed my life. Let's open with a word of prayer before we get into this. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you again, Lord. For another day and another opportunity, Lord, to share your truth. So I pray that you pour out your spirit upon me right now and bless all who will see this video. In Jesus Christ's precious name I pray. Amen. A couple of days ago, I got a chance to spend a little time with my wife. I believe it was last Sunday, if I remember correctly. And she wanted me to watch a documentary that she watched on YouTube about a man named Mully. Now, I didn't want to watch it because, you know, I have other things to do, Bible study videos and things, but I understand the importance of taking some time to spend with my wife. That's very important and very good for our marriage. So I half-heartedly agreed to watch the video. You know, I wasn't expecting much. I'm like, okay, let's watch it. And so we went on YouTube, and you have to pay $2.99 to see this movie. And so we sat here, and she did what she had to do with her computer. And finally, we figured it out, and we got it, we got it going. And I sat there, and I was watching this documentary with my wife, and it grabbed me and pulled me in. I couldn't take my eyes off of it from beginning to end. It made me cry. It made me rejoice. I mean, it just brought out every kind of emotion in me. And it was the most beautiful testimony that I've ever seen in my life. And it made me realize a lot of things about my own life. And so I feel inspired by God to do this video to encourage you to go on YouTube and type in M-U-L-L-Y, Mully, the movie, pay the $2.99 and watch the documentary about Charles Mully. Now, I'm going to read just a little bit about his life that you will find when you, uh, you know, go to Wikipedia. But I'm not going to give you every detail of the documentary because I want you to watch it for yourself. So when you look up Charles Mully, his last name is actually spelled M-U-L-L-I. But for the movie's sake, they got M-U-L-L-Y. And it says Charles Mully, and I'm not going to try to pronounce certain African names because I know I will butcher them. So I'm not going to try to pronounce the names of certain where he lived and, and, and certain African words. I'm just going to skip them because I don't want to mess them up. Charles Mully is a celebrated social entrepreneur and the founder and chief executive officer of Mully Children's Family, better known as MCF, okay? MCF is a Christian non-governmental organization based in Kenya that works with disadvantaged populations to transform their lives and enable them to lead 
dignified lives. Mully is the subject of the documentary film Mully, spelled M-U-L-L-Y, directed by Scott Hayes, which was released in October 2017. So this documentary was done in the, in the month of my birth, but back in 2017, and I had no clue, never heard of it. And I was so grateful to God for using my wife to get me to watch this documentary about Mully. Now here's a little bit about his early life and family. It says Mully, Charles Mully was born in 1949, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the name of that village because I know I can't. I'm just going to say in Kenya, in some village in Kenya, uh, abandoned by his family at age six. Let that sink in. He spent his adolescence begging on the streets. Now imagine six years old, abandoned by your father and your mother and the rest of your family. Just that part of his story alone made me realize that I have not really suffered any difficulties. Not at all. I've always had my mother and my father. I've always had a place to live. Always had something to eat. Six years old, abandoned by your family, and you're living out on the street begging trying to get something to eat, worried about what you're going to eat every day, and uh, let alone all the danger that's out there in the streets. Whew! Powerful, powerful, powerful. Anyway, he spent his adolescence on the street begging. And then it says, Mully attended in the names of these uh, schools, which I'm not going to butcher trying to pronounce, uh, he completed his primary education in 1966. He was unable to enter secondary school because he could not afford it. Now, when I learned that, I'm like, that was not the case for me, and that was not the case for many of you. I went to all my schools and, and, and didn't have to worry about how I was going to be paid for. So I've been tremendously blessed here in this country, and so have many of you. Here's a young kid who went to school and he couldn't even go to the next level because he couldn't afford to pay for it. Okay? It says at age 17, Mully converted to Christianity after walking into a church and going through an experience that he believed had allowed him to obtain salvation. So God got him at age 6, 17. Okay? And that's when he became a Christian. It says, Mully walked 70 kilometers. That's 43 miles to Nairobi in search of employment. Imagine walking 43 miles. That's a, quite a feat. It took him days to do it. And he did it because there was nothing for him to be able to uh, take care of himself where he was. There was no employment that he could get, and he was starving to death. So he started walking, just walking, and he got all, he went all the way to Nairobi, and the Lord carried him there. It says he found work at a private home where his duties included tilling the garden, washing clothes, cooking in the kitchen, and other domestic chores. So the Lord had his hand on him. He guided him to a home where there were wealthy people there. And he walked up to the door all raggedy and looking tired and exhausted and dehydrated. And the person who came to the door had compassion and took him in and gave him a job. So that was God directing him there. It says, a year later, Mully was promoted to a farm assistant and transferred to the, I'm not going to try to pronounce this, some kind of farm. You know, I don't want to mess this up. Um, and I'm not going to try to pronounce where it was because, you know, I'm not 
familiar with these African names. But anyway, he was promoted to assistance and went to this farm. And this is where he met his wife, Esther. Now, I won't try to pronounce her last name because I don't want to mess that up. So God took him a little bit higher. They saw he was a hard worker, a go-getter, so he got promoted to working on a farm where he met his future wife. And it says they married on December 22, 1970, and had eight biological children according to the official score. So the Lord took this poor African boy who had been abandoned by his family, got him a job, elevated him up to the status where he could actually afford to be married and have eight children himself. Okay. It says in 1970, Mully began working at Strabag, and I believe I can, that I can pronounce that, Strabag Road Construction Company, where he oversaw the company supplies. He remained with the company until 1970. Two. With the money he earned working for Strabag, Mully bought a vehicle and began operating a public transport service. And it tells you which cities he was running. You know, he would go from here to there. I can't pronounce that, so I'm not going to try. He also began engaging in agricultural business ventures. So the Lord put wisdom in the mind of this young man whose education level was, you know, hadn't reached where it, where it could have if he had the money to continue in school. So the Lord gave him great intelligence. You know, he worked and he saved his money and then he bought him a, a vehicle and he started transporting people. He saw there was a need for this and the Lord put it in him to make him uh, wise enough to do something with that idea. Okay? It says, Mully founded Mully Ways Agencies, a transportation business conglomerate. It says, in the 1970s, becoming very wealthy. So he worked and worked and worked, and he saved the money, and he got him a second van and hired a driver, and he just kept on doing it and kept on doing it until they end up having a whole transportation service there. That was divine intervention. That wisdom came straight down from heaven, okay? Um, it says, he also served as a chairman of the boards for several international schools in Kenya between 1970 and 1971. And I'm not going to try to pron uh, uh, pronounce the name of these schools. One was a girl's school, one was a preparatory school, and one was a high school. It says in 19. 89, Mully sold all his property and businesses. Listen to this, saints. And dedicated the proceeds to helping street children through rescue, shelter, medical care, and um, psychosocial support and education. So when you watch the documentary of Mully, he was doing very well, became very wealthy. And then one day the Lord just convicted him. He stopped his car and sitting there for hours. And the Lord was telling him, I brought you from nowhere. I brought you off of the street. He said, there are still people out there who were in the same situation you were in. I want you to go get those children. And after Mully made his peace with God, he went home and told his family what he was going to do. They all thought he was crazy. He told his friends what he was going to do. And then he sold everything that the Lord had blessed him with over the years. And he had a lot of money. And he went back and started getting those poor little black African babies off the streets, out of the slums of Kenya, and bringing them to his own house and feeding them and taking care of them. And he just kept going and kept going and kept going. And he got so many... <laughs> That it was no room for him to have in his house anymore. But the Lord had put it in his mind when he was a successful businessman to buy this very vacant territory that he planned for their retirement. That they were going to, 
used to uh, develop for his retirement. It was a huge area. And so he took all the children there, and then they started developing that. And when he ran out of money, he wasn't even worried about it because, you know, God told him to do this. The Lord mysteriously sent some lady that brought a whole bunch of food to keep it going. And he kept going and he kept going all the way to this day. And this thing is just amazing to me. It, it's, it truly is. Let me read a little bit more. Then we're going to look at a couple of verses and wrap it up. Uh, it says, currently, Mully Children's Family, that's the name of his organization, um, MCF, Mully Children's Family has just under 3,000 children in their centers, and it names all these different um, centers, which I'm not going to butcher trying to read because I don't read African words. Um, Anyway, since 1989, Charles and his wife, Esther Mully, have taken in more than 23,000 abandoned children. The reason why this thing means so much to me, because I support Feed My Starving Children as best as I can. And there's nothing nearer and dearer to my heart than feeding children and helping children who cannot help themselves. And we have this situation all throughout Africa and other countries where these children are born in these war-torn uh, countries and these dictatorships and there is no opportunity there and there's nothing but pain and suffering from the day they step into the world. If we don't help these children, who? Who? So we're sitting over here in the land of plenty. We are rich compared to them. The least that you and I can do is to support organizations like MCF, Feed My Starving Children, Water for Life, and the list goes on and on. So that is the reason that the Lord put it upon my heart to do this video, to encourage you to watch Mully, the documentary. Go watch it. It's worth the $2.99 on YouTube. And if it touches your heart, support his organization or some organization like his, like Feed My Starving Children. We're going to go to Scripture now. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. The wise King Solomon, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote these words. He says, he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. You see that? And that which he has given will he, that is God, pay him again. So there is no better giving you can do than to give to someone who cannot ever give you anything back. That's real giving. You know, lend your uh, next door neighbor $20, that's nothing because you know you can give it back. But when you give to starving children to help them uh, have clothes and shelter and food and education and they can't give it back, the Lord says, I'll give it back. And he doesn't mean money. You know, people always want to twist the scripture. He's talking about other blessings. Okay, everything ain't money. He's talking about continued blessing because of what you do for the poor. This is what God wants us as Christians to do. Proverbs 21, verse 13. The Lord says, whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. You see that? The Lord has made it our responsibility to help the poor wherever they are. 
and I mean those who are truly poor. You know, we got the welfare system here in this country that helps people with food stamps and things. I'm talking about real poor. People like over in Kenya and these other poverty-stricken hellhole African countries where there is no welfare, there is no help unless the relief ministries that are there help them. That's the only help they have. And so we may not be called to be Charles Mully, but we can support people like him. Okay? And in closing, in James chapter 1, verse 27, the Apostle James, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote there, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. Even in the New Testament, God says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is to visit the fatherless. That means to not just go visit them, but to help them. And widows, okay? You know, a lot of widows that don't have means. We're not talking about some woman who lost her husband, but he had a million-dollar life insurance policy. He ain't talking about that. She's set. We're talking about widows like over in these third-world countries and over in Africa. Husband gone. She has no money. She has no means. Got left her with 20 children. This is what he's talking about. People who are really struggling. And so I will not even suggest what charitable organization you should support. The purpose of this video is to say, give to some organization. Pray about it. Mine is Feed My Starving Children. Pray to God about it and ask God which organization he wants you to support. And research that organization to make sure it's a legitimate organization. Because unfortunately, we got a lot of parasites out here who will set up false organizations and have you thinking your money is going to help some starving children and it's going straight in their pocket. So I know Feed My Starving Children is legit and I know MCF is legit. So if you see some other organization, you make sure you thoroughly research it to make sure it's a legitimate organization. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And remember, let me read this one more time. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. <laughs> Excuse me, I should have put a book bookmarker there. I'm going to read both of those verses in Proverbs in closing. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17 again says, He that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. So it's just like giving to God when you give to the poor. And that which he has given will he, God, pay him again. The Lord is going to bless you for doing it, in other words. And then, again, in closing, Proverbs 21, verse 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. And what he means is, you will be crying in the lake of fire. That's right burning and burning throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, and the Lord will never hear you because you disregarded his word and you disobeyed this command. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.